Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video is about um, my book club or my selection of books that I use to inspire me or to get um, inspiration and my influences. Uh, over the years, I am a huge collector of books, uh, books, films, and music. Um, other people's ideas always inspire me um, and virtually a breeding ground and a pool of ideas that I can try to take uh, and depending on your perspective, um, innovate, copy or plagiarize. But the whole thing is to virtually find inspiration and then essentially try to put a spin on it in my own perception and take on a topic of choice and um, subject matter. But uh, today we're going to start with the first ones. And my first one is uh, the New York photographer Nan Golden. Now, one of my favorite books that she has published is The Ballad of Sexual Dependency. Um, I love this book and I've had uh, several of her books. Uh, she was influenced early on by Larry Clark uh, and Diane Arbus, uh, where she has a very honest portrayal of intimacy, uh, sexual dependency, uh, postcodal uh, afterglows, um, and an, insi an, an insider's look of uh, almost voyeuristic to a fly on the wall perception of. Uh, contact between two people uh, the one of my favorite albums by the Afghan Whigs gentleman was inspired by this actual uh, photograph using children um, so much so that it caused an uproar Um, she takes pictures of her friends, uh, close ones, uh, friends of friends, and virtually just has to be a fly on the wall of where she uh, happens to be and uh, time capsule those moments in time um, forever, uh, giving us a, an intimate portrayal of life pre-social media. Um, this was before putting, you know, everyone putting their life on display and virtually there is no filter on this type of life which I find very refreshing even the portrayals of herself in front of the camera uh, one of the most harrowing is after she had actually been uh, physically assaulted and beaten by uh, a lover um, which uh, is, is quite brutal um, I don't believe in trigger warnings or anything but these type of things can be very unsettling but at the same time um, shed light on the opposite side of the aspect of um, the rose tinted perfect life um, I believe everyone should have a perfect perfect life so to speak but um, there's something to be said about the artist who actually looks delves deeper into uh, the human psyche uh, the want for love, connection, intimacy, which we all virtually have. Um, and I know one of my friends virtually had a photo um, that she did uh, of a gentleman that I believe was shot in Berlin. And uh, it's a lovely portrait, but, I'm, but she, to me, is a very humanizing people photographer. And if you can, do give her work uh, uh, a look and investigate it further because she is virtually an, an amazing artist. One other thing about her is that um, with uh, Nan Golden is that she's shed light on uh, where galleries get their money from and virtually like the Blood Diamonds, uh, not all money is good money. And with the opioid crisis, she's tackled the Sackler family who donate 
millions of, of, of dollars and pounds and, and currency through institutions from their art galleries and wings to where people have started to protest to have their names removed. And there is a documentary that you should also check out and I'll put a link down below about that. But she is seriously uh, an amazing woman um, uh, and a great, great inspiring artist that I actually adore and love. Second uh, book that I love in my collection, um, Von Oliver, uh, Visceral Pleasures. Now, this is a little dear to me because Von Oliver essentially designed a lot of album covers. And as a child, my first introduction to art um, on top of uh, going to Movie Line Box Museum and seeing um, master uh, reproductions was album covers and rock bands and from the 60s to the 70s to the early 80s album covers were one of the ways to virtually pull uh, buyers to again before social media if you had a really cool album cover um they that kind of pulled you in further and art and music always went hand to hand, especially through the eyes of Andy Warhol. Uh, Von Oliver uh, was the primary designer for uh, 4 AD, which did bands like um, The Breeders, This Mortar Coil, and most famously The Pixies and The Cocktoo Twins. One of the things I love about this book is that essentially I look at his eye for composition and color uh, essentially the the use of how he uses text and placement and all he takes all the wrong pieces and somehow magically makes them work and um, I'll be honest when I was in my tattoo career I used to try to emulate some of his designs in Photoshop which I just just never got right and virtually I know that they always say you know great artist steal bad artist copy but it, it was one thing that a, I was trying to look at virtually reworking and retelling in my own way of his works and everything from, you know, Pixie's Surfer Rosa album cover, which I love. to the breeder's pod, which the uses of yellow, hot pink, um, him dancing with an eel and um, other things. But the, the, the blurred image is just so striking and so simplistic. But uh, again, when you take all these elements, uh, like the Cocteau Twins tw treasure, where it's a dress form with lace curtains and all these other things going on. It's very, very atmospheric. And that was that's the key word that I love about his stuff, was it extremely atmospheric and it virtually put helped put the brand of the label and the bands on on the you know popular culture map of you know popular culture. Um, to me he is one of the sung, unsung heroes of uh, art and the twenty first century. But if you can find this book, you know, um get it it's just incredible i love it and you know mine um with some of my art i am lumped in with uh street artists and urban artists because of uh, tattooing um to my work has is primarily seen on the street however um with graffiti artists because i don't get up at five in the morning and or three in the morning to do a throw up or paste up um you know i'm not within that click which is fine but uh one of the things that has always influenced me again is the influence of music on my work as well as the punk scene and in LA in uh, the early 80s um, 
it was not uncommon to come across flyers that, that to promote bands and gigs at uh, places like, you know, Moboy Gardens, uh, Fenders, Olympic Ballroom, Scream, uh, Raji's, and one of my favorite books is Fucked Up and Photocopied. Um, this book I love, and it is just, it's by Brian Ray at Turco uh, and his collection of flyers through the uh, late 70s to uh, early 90s. And essentially, you just have flyers from everywhere. And it's very much a DIY kind of um, book, which I, for some reason, I've always loved these things because to me, with, with the punk flyer, it was a do-it-yourself. Um, you took elements from what you had and you made them work to try to make something new. And looking at these from like Mark Rood, who did a lot of work for The Misfits, um, Raymond Pettibon, who did a lot of stuff for uh, Black Flag and so forth. These guys ended up virtually getting high praise from the commercial world. And, um, you know, in my early days, I did, I was lucky enough to draw a few flyers for friends, bands, and virtually this book is a godsend. So if you can get your hands on this, there's also a second uh, edition of this. So if you can find yourself a copy of Fucked Up and Photocopy, and please, please check it out. One of the things that I um, always love when viewing art is when I come across work that has an impact to me, uh, physically makes an impact, be it a, a good or bad, but a, a knee-jerk reaction or um, several works that have actually taken my breath away. The very first one I remember was Michelangelo's um, Lead on the Swan. And again, I saw that when I was a kid. I had been about six or seven um, at Movie Land Wax Museum in Buena Park, California. And this was the early 70s. Uh, and I was taken aback because I knew it was an erotic image. However, um, the, the <gasps> within that, uh, and, and when I start to delve into understanding art and the mythology that these things create, um, another reinterpreted of classic works like Bettina Rhymes, uh, Joel Peter Whitkin. He is known for taking people with disfigurements, uh, trans women, uh, people with uh, body anomalies and, um, different uh, oddities within them, even cadavers in his work. Um, some of his work is, can be considered quite brutal, uh, where his most famous work of the two men kissing, which is actually one head um, split in half that looks like two men kissing, called The Kiss, which got him into a lot of trouble. Um, he uses classical photography, but then uses dark images where he will actually use elements of s and reinterpret classical paintings, um, like um, E.J. Belloc, who used, was a fr French photographer who used to go to brothels and uh, take photographs of uh, women that worked in the brothels and he would scratch out their faces to protect their identity. Also, he would virtually uh, portray them in a very human manner. 
and um, one of the things I will only show you one portion of this but um, this is one of his famous ones with the Jesus Christ mask uh, which is one of his uh, trademark things within his identity um, people can look at his work and write it off as grotesque uh, just tasteless tacky um, just in, in poor taste however I think when you look beyond those and again when we strip the veneer of you know social media and everything life can be very beautiful but at the same time life can be very cruel and um, just very dark and sometimes very humbling to where and brutal in fact um, the, my, my, in my opinion but I always take a, a stand up and take attention when I see artists who portray these things because we tend to want to not look away but yet when we see a car accident we can't help look at the car accident and um, one of the things about Joel Peter Whitkin is he said that when he was a little boy um, the very first image he remembers seeing is a car crash and a severed head rolling up in front of him of a little girl and that always stuck with him um, not that he's actually taking photographs of little girls with severed heads or anything like that but um his work is well respected and i hope to one day especially one photo that i did uh, come across at, up at auction and when i put in um an inquiry about it <laughs> i thought it was to be about 12 grand and um uh, a french gallery wanted uh 32,000 euro and i was like whoa so um Come on, viewership! But um, the thing I do love about Joel Peter Witkin is that when he remakes classic works from Picasso, um, Lord Lytton, uh, he does it in such a way that is remarkably him and very. He only deals in dark and uh, black and white. Sometimes he distresses uh, the photographs, and virtually his uh, wife would tattoo the images or distress them and um put scratches through ta with tattoo needles um which is highly remarkable and when you see some of his stuff it can be quite um one of my favorite photos of his is one of a severed head uh that is a cornucopia called harvest um and one of a little girl wearing a it looks like a, a head mask in in a chaise lounge on a chaise lounge, on a chaise lounge. But um, it's incredibly uh, a beautiful f photo, much like the ones of um, E.J. Ballot, uh from France, and who was a huge inspiration to him. And to me, I, I do think that Joel Peter Whitkin, which I have many of his books, I, again, I just love books, and um, he is one of the main influences from me. Um, I didn't show any Warhol today uh, because uh, primarily Warhol was my gateway drug into the art world in a sense other than record album covers but I will get to him later so um, if you guys could uh, check out any of these I'll put a link down below on the resources that you can have a look at of all these artists and um, thank you for coming and I hope to you uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for updates and everything and I will see you guys soon. All right, take care. Bye.